people in here. Cowboys are digging the true bar. Alright, let's fire up chat activities. Bam, I'm live. Awesome. <laughs> Alright. Said he was gonna bring my coffee over. Our usual spot has actual people in it. it. It is my second office. I don't like the light over here. It's kind of dark and gloomy. I like that light better. And there's more people staring over my shoulder. <laughs> there's nobody over here. We are all by ourselves. They're playing, uh, what are they playing? Every patient that comes to New Year, they have a year. Oh, shut up. The They're playing, uh, is... Charlie Brown Christmas. I love it. I'm digging it. Brock Frederick is live. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Why do all my accounts tell me that? Like, like I don't know. <laughs> All right, um, he's used to me being over there. I don't know if I should go hunt him. That's a new chick over here, too. She's just like, and I walk in here like, I'm Brock Frederick. And she's just like, and what do you want? <laughs> we'll have to educate her with some dollars. Dollars usually educates people. All right, I'm going to go check real quick. Maybe he left it over there. Cause I'm like Jones in this coffee. Yeah, man, is I'm doing good. All right, let me turn this around. You could join me on my adventure. I knew it. How did I know that? I just know stuff. Alright, shall we, uh... Okay, let's ritualize some coffee, then we'll get into AMA. Boom! Pow! How you doing, Venus? I'm gonna say all the hellos in a second. Let me get all the phones out of my pockets. <laughs> Alright. Phones. Got all the phone activities. All right, there we go. That's a good look. It's my office. Yeah, all right. Let's fire up some coffee. I hope everyone's having an absolutely wonderful Friday, whatever you did, whatever you're doing. And I wanted to thank everyone for joining me uh, yesterday for the train track walk. That's the earliest one I've done. All the other one, I did, that'd be the third one. We did the other ones like later in the year, like January and February. I don't know, it just looked like fun. It was fun. All right, is there enough sugar here? Barely enough. Oh no, there's enough. I like these rocks. I'm gonna save this one to eat later. Let's put, uh, yeah, let's go for three more. Plunk, plunk, plunk. Yeah, let's eat one. <laughs> The town is full of cowboys. I'm going to cowboy up tomorrow. You'll see. We hit, oh, they're playing uh, Jack Frost, nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols with your something, something, something. I'm so Christmassy. I'm feeling good. I just wish it would slow down. Pump the brakes there, Santa. All 
I was deciding what I'm gonna eat for Christmas. I'm gonna get a big old piece of meat, something, and I'm gonna make like five pounds of chicken cutlets. And I'm gonna devour them. I'm gonna eat like five pounds easily. Look at all them cowboy hats out there. Sick. No, no, no froth this time, but all right, we'll live. I love that coffee. That coffee blew away. Let's see, where were we? I forget, this week has been a blur. We were, uh, blah. We were, we were at the Durango. And that coffee was, like I said, it was okay, but it wasn't no, uh, it wasn't no true bar. <laughs> Durangus. We were at the Durangus. Next week we'll go back there and we will, uh, we're gonna try that steak and egg special over at George's. I think I could afford it, it's like 20 bucks. Lots of cowboys, lots of cowgirls too. It's interesting how they dress. A lot of sparkles and boots and sparkles and skirts and stuff. All right, let's, go, let's get a little coffee in us. And then I'll do some intros, say hello, and then we'll get right into it. I did, Janice, I did try, I mean, it's been a long time. I did eat uh, an omelet here maybe like three months ago, at least three months ago, while I was waiting for something. It was pretty good, I ain't gonna lie. I like the food here. This might be... Wow, the, the crank in the music. I don't know if this is gonna bode well. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. So, that means, let me dry my mustache. That means I'm gonna invite you to like, share, subscribe, and Hit that bell button to get notified when I do this again, which is at least five times a week. And if you want to support the channel, Super Chat while I'm live is absolutely awesome. And Super Chat questions will get priority and they will 100% get answered. Won't miss one. Uh, and if you want to support, do all the stuff down there. Christmas is coming. I got the Amazon links. Whether you order something I got or start your shopping with me, I do get a 1% kick on that. Sick. Um... And we got Olight, and Olight sending some new stuff. And on this Friday, I am picking the winners of the two Olights. So stay tuned for that. So on the next AMA, I will announce that. I'll put it up in the group first, but I will announce that. And uh, let's see, Tiege Henley, look, look at that. Look at that freaking winter glow. I use that lotion on my hands. My hands are all like sort of jacked up and dry. Look at that. Remember yesterday how bad they were? Shit works. <laughs> Alright, so. It's AMA time. Um, what do we gotta talk about? We gotta, it's time to ask me almost anything. Okay, you know the ground rules, but for the new people out there, I'm not gonna give you my social security number, my date of birth, my driver's license, or, nor my home address. But everything else is up for grabs. You could ask me about Vegas, you could ask me about me, you could ask me about you, you could ask me about anything. Whatever you want to talk about, we will talk about. Uh, like I said, super chatted questions do get priority because I do get to see them separate. And if someone's going to take the time to send a super chat with a question, I'm going to answer it. Um, all other questions, I will, uh, I will address as I see them if I feel it's uh, an interesting topic. So... I'm going to start by saying hello to people, uh, da, 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 da. Maria already kicked off with the five Bananaramas, and I will answer that question shortly, thank you very much, yo yo in 90, Maria, Mary, Janice, Tom Mac, Val Marie, Angie, Yemenis Video Productions, good on you, good on you, keep those, uh, keep those digital videos coming. Yeah, Vegas, is Vegas going to be packed? You know, they'll say there's going to be, you know, 10 million people. They'll end up to be about 150 as per usual. But, you know, we'll, we'll go out. We'll see it for ourselves. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Don't let the door hit you. Who's going? <laughs> oh, Daniel comes and goes. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Neutron. I like Neutron 9. Yeah, it might as well be a mocha. Scott, what's happening? I just got hit with a commercial. Yesterday, I had like two commercials the entire live stream. And I just got hit with one. They're doing some... I don't know, they're cooking turkeys or something. I don't know what's going on now. Whoa! Whatever. Alright, shut up. I don't even know what this come on. Schedule your eye exam? Alright. I don't know. Whatever. I was saying a lot of people are so rudely interrupted. Keith Bubba, Tom Helm, Scott, Joseph Q, Sylvia, Marie Bella, Venus. Keep them coming, keep them coming, keep them coming. For the joy of Vegas, Boston Pete in the house. Fletch, what's going on? All right, you ready? Rob Bros, rib roast, yeah, I want a rib roast. But chicken cutlets, oh, I'm gonna, I, I haven't made them or ate them in like, in probably almost two years. So I'm just gonna freaking devour them. So what is it, what is 1800 seconds? <laughs> Someone just got timed out for 1800 seconds. That's a long time. Someone do the math on that. What is that, like two years or something? Holy shit. All right. Oh, come on by. <laughs> My name's Broar. I don't think we've met what yet. Broar. Broar. B-R-O-R. Nice to meet you, Kayla. Nice to meet you too. Thanks, Sorry, Kayla. No, that's okay. And I got you. If you could check on me in a bit, I'll probably need a refill. No worries. All right. I thank you, you very much. I got you too. Now we're friends. Let me, I'm actually going to stick some money out there right away. Look, you want to see something? Americano, yo. Oh, it's going to show up backwards. All right. Read it backwards. <laughs> Can you read that backwards? Three dollars and seventy-nine cents. And you wonder what, you know, besides the fact that the coffee is absolutely, I mean, I think it's the best in town. Besides the fact that it's the best in town, I wish I could flip it around. This freaking, this software, like, like most software, doesn't mirror. At least on Samsung, it does it on iPhone. And I'll leave the 20 out there. That way she knows I'm not going to, you know. Man, she'll bring me a treat. <laughs> but now she's on board with the program. Yeah, it's cheap. Four bucks, you know? And I give him like a, I give him $15, you know? All right, so back to the original question. My nose is itching like crazy today. I've been sneezing. There is something in the air. Maria says, with the five banana soup chat, thank you very much. Uh, what's up, Keto? Keto Patty for life. When you're in the 700 million income bracket, will you still be the cool guy you are and still love us all? Yes. I promise. And I know where you got the 700 million, because that, that's my go-to number when I think about the future. It just, it just sounds good, right? It, so, it sounds attainable. You know, that's what I'm shooting for. Retire with 700 million. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, money doesn't change. I've been up and down and up and down throughout the course of my life. I was born, you know, a food stamp child. I lived in a, at a country club <laughs> you know, on the ninth hole. You know, I lived in my van for a while. You know, I've, I've had the roller coaster of life. I've experienced it all, the highs, the lows, the economic bounties, the pitfalls, the whole thing. And I just remain me, you know? So, yeah. Oh, a big shout out to everyone. What was that? Um, to everyone celebrating Hanukkah. Shalom. Scott says, you got a great story, bro. Can't wait to hang out one day. We will, we will. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could. That's why I could like associate and, you know, and relate to so many people. I've been homeless and I've lived like, 
you know, I've lived at the top and I've lived at the bottom. I've lived on the street and I've lived at a country club, you know, my entire life. You know, it's been an interesting, interesting place. I should write a book. Uh, Tom says, do you think crying is a sign of strength or weakness in men? Um, that's an interesting one. You know, like, I get choked up a lot, but I don't rip out a good cry, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't think a man should, there's two, there's two cases, I mean, Oh, that, that's a that's a good question. I mean, part of me, you know, the alpha fu type of, you know, da 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 says real men don't cry, but at the same time, real men do. If it's something worth crying about, I mean, if you're crying over spilt milk, then you know, you're kind of a fool. Um, but life hits different, hits different people different ways. I would highly recommend, um, it, when it comes to crying in front of women, I wouldn't, you know, unless it's maybe a LTR, long-term relationship, because that, you know, in certain cases, that might diminish your standing, depends on what it is, you know, because a woman wants a, you know, a rock to, you know, lean on, but... Shit, I get choked up sometimes when Frosty melts, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, you know, and I carry on. I get choked up sometimes, you know, during the live stream thinking about stuff. But, you know, a, a flat out freaking ugly cry ball, no, that, that ain't manly. But shed a tear, you know, that's all right. That's definitely all right. Okay, let's see. Wow, I'm, my allergies are ripping. There's something in the air. For 2024, will you choose a recipe for us to cook, not gluten-free pizza, something else? Yes, I will. That, thank you for the five bananaramas. That's a good idea. Um, if you want, if you want to like lean me in a direction and, you know, we'll go over that. Maybe we'll do that on, okay, I'm going to do, I think Christmas Eve, Eve, and Christmas Eve, 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 I'm gonna do two live streams. One's is gonna be uh, just a bro nation after dark, chilling out, hanging out type of thing. And the other one, I'm gonna read the entire Grinch. That's gonna be fun, with a couple shots in me. That'll be fun. So one of those nights, I'll do it. So in the bro nation Facebook group, drop some things that you might wanna see. Um, hold on a second. Hold on. I'm going to turn this around momentarily. <laughs> no one needed to see that. Alright, we're back. <laughs> There's something in the air. What's the most I ever won on a machine? Says Venus, thank you for the 10 bananaramas. Uh, from you and Jim, thank you both. The most I ever won was 6,700 at the Bellagio on a Buffalo machine on a $3 bet. 60, let me see, let me think about that a second. I never recorded that one because it happened spontaneously. Yeah, it was on it was on a three dollar bet, 67, 67 and change or whatever. And I hit right before that, I hit seventeen hundred. So that was the most I've ever won on a slot machine ever. Because I don't really play progressives, you know. I mean, I saw that guy that I watch who plays the high limit Buffalo, uh, Edu Casino, E D U Casino. Go check him out. Not now, but he bets like. I, see, something makes me think he might own this machine because it's always the same machine, always kind of the same sounds, but maybe not. Um, you know, I, I think he's a Spanish dude, but he bets like anywhere from 75 bucks a spin all the way up to 450. 
and the other night he won, he always, always plays the same machine, Revolution, and he won the grand for $1.2 million, you know, which is pretty freaking cool, <laughs> you know, good on you, if, if it's real, good on you, but, um, because I don't play progressives, that's the most I ever won. And they remove, they remove the bank of buffalo that actually play, that actually pay the penny ones. There's uh, one bank of nickel machines that pay, and there was a bank of four with two machines that play that paid. The ones that I always used to sit in front of when I started the live at Bellagio, they're gone. They moved them out to put up the Christmas display, so. Frickin' yikes. Um, oh, and tap the glass somewhere around like uh, 720. I'll show you the, the giant, there's a giant Christmas tree over there. We'll go see that. Jim West, about the same as yours. You, uh, 6,500 6, on a six pound spin. What is the exchange rate currently? I wanna, I wanna come out, uh, I wanna come visit the UK. That, that's that's something I've been meaning to do for a while. We might have to we might have to talk about that. <laughs> Did you ever do the driving across the U.S.? No, that to the Grateful Dead. I was never down with the Grateful Dead. You know, I, I just didn't like some of my friends' parents were into it. It was very like you know hippie, peace and love. You know, keeping Woodstock alive kind of dearly, but. I just never got into the Grateful Dead. Their music sort of, I don't know. I mean, not to offend people, but for me, it's like chewing on tinfoil. <laughs> you know, it just kind of grates me a different way, you know, maybe because of my, my personality. I'm a little more like, you know, I listen to like Black Sabbath. <laughs> you know, that's, that's more my cup of tea. I want to get hype. I don't want to like be mellow and, you know, that's just me. But would I have a follow-up band? That would be a follow-up question, no. No, they should follow me. <laughs> you know, I, I just don't, I, it, it just wouldn't do anything for me. You know, I know a lot of people do, you know, groupies and whatnot. I don't know, I just can't, can't get into it. Gary with the 10 Banana Ramas, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. 7,000 is about 8,800. So it's, uh, let me do the math, 1.08. Is that correct? Sounds about right. No. Yeah, that sounds about right. Something like that. I don't know. Who has the bu best buffet in Vegas right now? I'm going to guess, but I'm going to go by what I hear and say uh, the wind. The wind supposedly has the best. And what's cool about them versus, I mean, the competitor would be Bacchanal. I think a distant third would be Wicked Spoon, um, but the Bacchanal, you could wait there like one hour, two hours. Elaine, thank you very much. Shout out, Florida. Um, you could wait there. How the wind does it is you pay and they give you like a, a reservation. So when, you know, when it's your time to go, you just go. You don't have to sit online like, you know, Trudeau. Hold on a second. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I am leaking today. Only when I came outside. When I was in the house, not so much. Can you hear the uh, can you hear the Charlie Brown Christmas playing in the background? That's freaking awesome. Vince, who's that? Vince uh, Grimaldi, I think his name is. Alright, let's get back into it. Oh, I can't wait to read The Grinch. I'm, I'm gonna do, uh, I'll do a couple of trial runs for myself so I don't stumble over the words. Yeah, and the Bacchanal does kick you out after uh, 90 minutes, as does the win, unfortunately. You know, they just don't want you camping. Which, you know, I'm, I'm sure if you grease someone, you could stay. But 90 minutes is a pretty long time to eat. But if you want to sit and chill afterwards, that's kind of like, 
you know, it's kind of rude. Leonard T, what's going on? Uh, how do you pronounce that? Guaraldi? Guaraldi. Vince Guaraldi. He's a freaking genius. Genius composer. All right. Keep them coming. Did I just get hit with another freaking commercial? Who is this freaking dude? It's making chicks cry. That's a second commercial so far. That's some bullshit right there. I, okay, people, like I keep saying, I have no control over commercials. They remove my ability to control commercials. Because I guess they didn't think I put enough in or something every 30 minutes, you know? Now, nothing. Yeah, that's true. Wicked Spoon did want us out in two hours. I, did we, uh, did we meet that expectation? Two hours is a long time, you know, to sit. The food, the food was pretty good there. I'm not going to say no. It wasn't, uh, for me, there could have been a little more meat. That kind of leaned on the seafood a little heavy. It depends what you're into. Taxes suck. What is the most underrated restaurant in... Hmm, wow, what is the most underrated one? I'm trying to think. Hmm, that's a good question. I'm trying to think of the ones I'd go to. Underrated. I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to call anything underrated in Las Vegas right now. Because most, I'll be honest, most of the places in Vegas right now are, are gargantuanly overrated. You know, they just, they don't live up to the hype, nor do they live up to what you pay, unfortunately. So, you know, I'd be hard pressed to say this one leaning in the other direction, to be perfectly honest. I mean, the palms over here, you know, they, they almost doubled their prices in the past two years, and it's, you know, no more than a freaking cafe. Um, I'd say off strip, you probably have a better chance of scoring, you know, something along that nature, underrated herbs and rye. Uh, and then there's like the egg and I, which, you know, me and my bros eat out a lot. That's good. Does George Wallace still do a show at the Flamingo? I don't think so. I haven't seen anything about him in years. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm not a deadhead either. Yeah, that, <laughs> the, I, I just hit that. I have been to uh, Herb and Rye, Mary. It, it's good. You know, it's good. You know, it's off the strip a bit, but it's good. I'm, I'm still trying to think underrated. What would I consider underrated? I would say Javier's. Even though they're not cheap, I would say they just don't come up the list the way you would think. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not like a hidden spot or anything, but Javier's is good. Like I always say, they make a strip steak it's made by elves or something, or maybe it's made of elves. I, I don't know what it's made out of. But it's the only steak I've ever eaten that's literally melted in my mouth after two chews, and it's not all that expensive. Uh, the only thing I wouldn't recommend, because I had two bad experiences over there with our taquitos. You know, I almost like broke a tooth on them damn things. But other than that, they're good. Uh, nope, you, you did not miss, Captain Dave did not, not miss the five best place to eat shrimp. <laughs> I, I know where you're going. I, I just don't do it. Let's see. Um, I saw something else. What was the most valuable lesson you've learned in the past year? What has been the most valuable lesson I learned in the past year? That's a good question. That might, I'm gonna need another one already. That might require some further talk, thought. The most valuable lesson I learned so far this year. Um, well, one of them, like I said, one of them is I, I've left a lot of things 
people. We we discussed this last week a bit. I've left I've left a lot of things in the dust. Uh, people, things, ideas, or whatever. I've been really honing in on separating the uh, the wheat from the chaff, as they say. You know, and I've been getting really really good at that, and it's paying off in dividends. You know, like. You'd be surprised how much, how many things, how much stuff steals your time, steals your resources, steals your attention in your life. Sometimes it's people, you know, the people you surround yourself with can just hold you back to a, a disproportionate degree. You want to be around for everyone and, you know, this and that, but, you know, sometimes you just got to... <laughs> you gotta pull the trigger on letting people that hold you back go, and I've been I've been getting real good at that this year. And that I have, yeah. There's tons of cowboys in town. I'm, I'm gonna be one of them tomorrow. You'll see. Come on, cowboy, the f up. Or, um, Michael, who's that? El Cortez is cool. Yeah, I mean, okay, there you go. There's an underrated place. I would say, um, what do you call it? Seagull 41? I would call that an underrated place. That, they got some good food over there. And it's not that expensive, and they got good food. How you doing? Good. Um, you sell, my friend? Could you bring me a refill? Absolutely. What's it? Uh, Americano with uh, a bunch of sugar and some heated okay. milk. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Someone else knew. Do I make New Year's resolutions? Um, this year I have. You know, every other year, like I, we were discussing in the last uh, AMA, it's odd sitting on this side that for the first time I am doing that, you know? Yeah, Siegel, Siegel 41, I would consider, you know, an underrated place to eat. And it's good. And if you sign up for their club, I'll get back to that in a second. If you sign up for their club, they send you all sorts of offers, you know, to go in there. I mean, I get like 25%, uh, $20, $25 off if I go in there. On other times, they do... Uh, buy one get one free whatever you know buy one entree get another entree free so yeah <clears throat> you know that that's that's a good deal so this year that that is part of my uh, my new year's resolutions to just uh, <clears throat> cut some things out of my life you know cut some you know dwindle down I'm not so people I've already done you know that's I'm kind of good with that but dwindle down the bullshit in my life, the the distractions. I mean, this 2024, I'm gonna come out swinging, you know, like I always do, but I'm very, very focused on what I need to do, you know, in my life and in my career and in my business. What the hell was that? The whole place. The whole place is flashing, all the emergency lights are going off. Oh, no. What the hell is that? That was weird. So, yeah, I'm, I'm coming out, hitting the ground running, you know, this year. I got a lot of goals, and the only way I'm going to achieve them is, uh, you know, cutting out the bullshit. Cutting down on the bullshit. Anyway. Ta-ta-ta-ta! Keep them going, keep them going. Highly recommended. Are we talking about veggies? <laughs> Frank is at the airport. Oh, yeah. That, that's another thing. I mean, I travel. I don't travel a lot, but I travel. Las Vegas has a... You are so right, Franklin. Las Vegas has the dirtiest freaking airport. Yeah, I've never been to Saginaw's Deli. I have not been there. Um, it is filthy. It is literally filthy filthy. You know, I don't know why. I mean, okay, there's five million people a year going through it and whatnot. Um, but it is dirty. It's, I mean, you know what? I actually took some pictures about how dirty it was. Now, now that we're on that. 
it, it is. It's freaking dirty. It's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment to the town. How absolutely freaking filthy Las Vegas is. I mean, Las Vegas in general is getting pretty freaking filthy. But the air... Oh, yeah, I do have them still. The airport in and of itself is disgusting. I mean, look at that. I mean, I literally took pictures last time. I mean, that's nasty. That's a straight up nasty. Look at that. <laughs> Why does it, you go to any other airport? Look at that. You are so right. You go to any other airport and it's clean. You know, they're, they're proud of it. Why does Las Vegas airport look like such a shithole? I mean, look at that, that's foul. It's weird, you know? You'd think they'd take better care, but just like everything else in Vegas, they're just like, the mentality here in Vegas is, as long as people keep coming, there's no need to change, there's no need to improve, F it. That's literally how this town thinks, and it's gonna bite them in the ass eventually. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. But yeah, Brandon's been holding everyone back. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope Brandon and Brandon Jr. are going to be gone this year. I mean, next year. That'll be awesome. I did not get a chance to eat anywhere at the Durango um, because on opening day, that was the only time I've been there, it's opening day, and it was just a mob scene. But I am going to go back um, Monday or Tuesday of next week, and we'll go eat at the George. and have. I want to have their steak and eggs special because supposedly they have uh it's like a new york strip so we'll see it's all like it's like 18 bucks or whatever I figure with coffee and the whole bit i'll be in and out of there for 25 bucks yeah the airport is just it's just a shithole it's so nasty uh what kind of people and things are distracting you um what kind of people I don't know if there's a specific kind. There was just a few, you know, people like hanging on from the past who was, you know, had no value in my life. Like people, you know, like, how would I say? All right, good question. I'm gonna give you a good answer. I had a couple people in my life that were constantly asking my advice. You know, like apparently, I know what the fuck I'm, uh, I know what the heck I'm talking about. With most things, um, my my perception of situations is like spooky. My intuition is freaking spooky. So people tend to gravitate towards me for various things. Wonderful, thank you very much. Oh, you going too? Cool. Matching? <laughs> yeah. I'll do the check for you, okay, my friend? Yeah. I'm gonna do the pinky. Just call me her friend. We're friends now. All right, ready for another one. Um, don't take my sugar, bro. All right, so I had a bunch of people in my life. I wouldn't say a bunch, a few people in my life that would constantly be asking me advice, you know, or telling me their problems. Da, 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 da. And I would I would give them sound, wise counsel, you know? Above and beyond the call of duty. Like, someone actually asked me, why don't people prioritize me? You know, and, I, and I'm just like, you know, and then I'd like reply and wouldn't hear back for three days. And I'm just like, because you don't prioritize anyone, you selfish bum, you know? So, the... the Long story short, I had some people like, you know, hangers on that, um, you know, would constantly like suck time and advice and, you know, they were using me like their freaking therapist. And that shit, you know, I, I would be okay with it because, you know, I'm a, I'm a good person. I would be okay with it if they actually followed some advice, if they actually uh, saw some fruit in their lives if they actually changed, adapted, and saw, you know, got some personal growth out of it. But no, 
you know, that, I ain't gonna let people use me as their friggin' personal therapist and whatnot. That shit ain't happening. So, AMF to them. That's the type of people that I ended up cutting out of my life. Things, um, some clutter, you know, I, I'm not, I don't hoard, but I do get sentimental. Remember, I tilted my head. <laughs> it, it's just a weird angle looking this way. Let me see if I turn this way. All right, that's better. Um, I don't hoard, but I'm kind of sentimental about things, you know? I just can't help it. You know, I, I look at things and I'm, you know, I, I, I get attached to things, especially things that people have given me, not in relationships. I burn that shit. I give it back or burn it, one or the other. But, um, you know, things, you know, that I, I get a little too sentimental sometimes about cer certain material things. And I've had to adjust to that and let shit go. You know, because the memories are going to stay around forever. You know, I don't really need to see the object, per se. Except what you guys send me. That, I'm going to keep putting up in my office until there's no room and I'll still save it. You know, that, because again, I'm extraordinarily sentimental about stuff like that. You know, that's just me. Anyway, questions. Blah, 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 blah. There goes that flashing again. Either someone's in here with a pro camera, or there's a fire drill about to take place, one or the other. Anthony Wrench, what's going on? Yeah, she's very polite, wasn't she? She was quite polite. This, this is some strong ass coffee. I wonder what my heart rate is. Let's check it real quick. I, I, wore, I wore it at night. Because I wanted to see what my sleep patterns were. And it's, oh, someone is behind me flashing something. I, I could see it bouncing all over the place. I wore it last night to check out my sleep patterns and everything. Alright, thank you. Whatever. I want to, he's gone now. Let's take a picture of the back of my head. I recognize a girly from the back of her head. <laughs> That's the funniest line from the Beastie Boys. What a what a sick burn. Yo, I recognize you, girl, from the back of her head. That's a sick burn. I want to use that one day. I don't know on who, but one day I'm going to use that. Trust me. Ah, all right, let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Is Italy any good? Italy is pretty good it's expensive for what it is to sit in like the the food hall environment I mean I'd rather personally I'd rather go sit in buffets <laughs> than eat at the I mean that's pretty expensive unless you're gonna get like a bowl of pasta or whatever like that but other than that that place is pretty expensive but nice nonetheless If you could sit on a bench in the middle of a beautiful forest, who would you like to sit next to and why? Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, um, he just inspires me. You know, he was he was a great man. Just politics aside, his insight, his wisdom, his work ethic, his intuition, his positivity. His wit, amazing. I mean, ama he was just an amazing, to me, he was just an amazing guy. Yeah, stalkers, freaking stalkers. I, w I, would, I could sit next to him and just listen to him for hours. So yeah, it would definitely be Ronald Reagan. No offense or buts. What would be better, someone who listens to your advice intently or someone who doesn't seem to care but to take an action all day? You know, that's the fruit. The fruit of life is, what. The, how does the expression go? You can judge a fruit by its, you could judge a tree by its fruit. And, you know, an apple tree don't drop oranges, an orange tree don't drop apples. Uh, Good people don't drop turds. Turd trees 
don't drop gold, you know? I mean, you could judge the tree by what kind of fruit, you know? If someone's trying to sell you, you know, uh, if they're giving you advice on how to get rich, you know, how to make your first $700 million, and they're driving a hoopty, you know, you know, and they got holes in their underwear, you know, well, the fruit ain't matching the tree, you know what I'm saying? That's how you judge. I'm not saying just financially, but whatever. If someone's asking you to, uh, you know, if someone's giving you advice on marriage and their sucks, if someone's giving you advice on being calm and peaceful and their life is in chaos, you can always judge a fruit, uh, the tree, by the fruit that it bears. You know, so I would rather have someone just pick up on something that I say or do or whatever, follow through and see some fruit in their lives, you know? I mean, that's what we're all put here, and I feel like I was put on Earth to, uh, or kept on this Earth, you know, because I had many opportunities to leave, you know, not, not self-induced, but, you know, <laughs> You know, it's been some stuff, you know. I think I'm here for a purpose, and I think it is to reach some people, you know. Regardless of what this channel does, um, I know I'm reaching a few people, even if it's just a handful, you know, witnessed by some of my stats, but I know I'm reaching some people. Some people need to hear some of the stuff I need to say. I right, hold everything. with this freaking allergy. I'm like harkening back to my upbringing. I've, I've said a lot of things. Uh, I've said a lot of things. Very like Italian lately. Uh, okay, what does the American dream mean to me? Alright, that's simple. Um, very similar to, thank you for the five bananaramas, appreciate the super chat. Some people would say the white picket fence, um, I do want to answer that question. Da, 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 da. I saw a question I want to answer. Someone has to remind me real quick. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm actually at Caesars right now. I'm gonna answer that question. Someone, someone said something. Hold on. Oh, let me fire back up the chat. I think uh, I think that got lost. Oh, crypto. That is a great question. Remind me of that in a second while I answer this. What does the American dream? Some people say the white picket fence. Um, you know. 2.3 kids, you know, yada, yada, yada. I would define it in today's political, economic, socio-economic, socio-world that we live in as not being able to think with your, not having to think with your wallet. That would be a dream come true. Now, does that mean you know, rock and rollies and, you know, thousand dollar pairs of shoes? No, not necessarily, because I believe everyone should live within their means. Never above your means. That, that's a recipe for disaster. Uh, living, live below your means, that's a recipe for success. That's what I try to do. Um, not having to think with your wallet. Not being able to, like, I want to do this, but... You know, and credit cards have kind of negated that thinking too because people have this misfounded belief that money on a credit card actually belongs to them. Oh, I got I got 18,000 bucks on this card. I'm going to Vegas. It's not your money. <laughs> it's not, you're like taking it from a loan shark, you know? Don't do that. But not having to think with your wallet, I, I would say currently is the American dream roof over your head that's going to continue to change because the climate of this country now is such where they really don't want you to own a house you know so i think the permanency of people living in apartments is just going to be forever like people will never 
generations under mine and under you know, a lot of yours out there will never know what it's like to be a homeowner and they will like it. Um, they will be taught that you don't need all that aggravation and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, so not financial freedom. Yeah, that, that's what I'm getting at, but in check, you know? I mean, you can achieve that quicker than you think. You could achieve, depends what your aspirations are. You know, if you're a horologist and all you want is a Patak Philippe in your life, you know, you might be disappointed. But if you're a modest individual and you're living a modest life, you can achieve not having to think with your wallet. It is an attainable goal still in this day and time, but you have to be, you have to be wise and you have to be frugal. You know, you can't be just like YOLO, you know, Uber Eats a cheeseburger for 32 bucks, you know? You can buy the whole freaking 10 pound roll of uh, ground beef for less than that, you know? But people are just stupid these days. But it is, uh, it is attainable. Let's see. Crypto asks, how do you deal with friends and family who are always asking for money? I've had to do it. I've, I've had to do it. BCDC, I will get to that. Thank you very much. Frugal, you know, frugal does not mean cheap. It just means respecting the value of money and how hard it is to attain for not only you, but for the people around you, you know, and respecting it and dealing with it accordingly. That's frugal. I'm, I'm not cheap at all. Um, you know what I do? when I get those people who, uh, you know, always asking for money, always borrowing money. When I get to the place where, first of all, I never loan money. I, I don't loan money to people. I will never loan money to people because you'll probably never see it back and it'll probably ruin a relationship. So when, you're, when you have a circle, like, you know, like my bro, you know, I mean, there's times when I'm like, you know, I'll turn to him and I'll be like, yo, you got a hundo on you? And he'll reach in his pocket and like, that'll be his cash. And it'll just go like this with an open hand and I'll peel out what I need. And then like, you know, a week later, he'll be like, yo, you know, you got a hundo on you? And I'll reach in my pocket and be like this or 20 or whatever. And he'll take what he, I don't care. I don't freaking care. You know, that's just the way we roll because we're that close. You know, what I have, you know, unless I'm starving, I'm, that might change. But when people are like straight up hounding you for money, what I do is, I, like I said, A, I never expect it back. If you want to maintain a relationship with this person, this friend, this family member, never expect it back. But when they come the second time, and you still care, and you still see the need, and you still see their desperation, um, I, I make it a point of saying, I'm gonna give this to you. It's, it's not like I have it extra. Like, there's no extra money, there's no extra cigarette, there's no extra anything in life. It is what it is. So this isn't extra money. But I love you, or I care about you. And I'm going to give it to you because I understand the predicament that you're in. But this is the last time. There, there will be no more after this. So if you really need it, I will give it to you. But understand, this is the last time. So do you want to use it now? Or do you want to like hold this in abeyance? You know, is there any, way, any other way you have out of this situation besides me? Because that's it. You know, that, that, that's it with me. And then I let them decide what our relationship is worth. You know, because then I'm putting the onus on them. They're deciding how much our relationship is worth. And if they say, I'll take it. You know, I'll take that hundred. I'll take that twenty. I'll take that thousand, whatever. You know, okay, you just, you just put a dollar sign on our relationship. But you can still come around. Um, just, just know 
this is the last time. And if they do ask again, I hold them accountable. I'm like before they even start. Hey, can we, you know, can we talk? You know, you heard about this and that, and blah 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 blah. Or I got this great business deal, or you know, uh, they're, they're gonna cut my lights off again. I'm just like, remember I told you last time? Can't do it. I mean, before they even finish, can't do it. Told you, couldn't do it. That that was that was your chip. <laughs> That was your opportunity. You needed it then. I mean, if you didn't take it then, I might have done it now, but that was your choice, you know? I really would love to help you, but I can't. Remember I told you, ain't gonna do it no more. You know? And that's that. That's that. That's how I deal with it. Whoa, hold on. It must have been the fact that yesterday was like 75 degrees. I think some things freaking sprouted. Thank you, Jim. I mean, it's all about, like I said, you know, remember I went into that whole conversation about even in a relationship to like make contracts, you know, to always do that. That's how I that's how I would parent. I'm not a parent, but I would parent the same way. I'd be like, all right, I'll take you to go see that movie, but you have to do, you know, you have to score that at least the C plus. You know, I I would deal. You know, that way you hold each other accountable. You know? That way you can't say, well, I didn't, you know, oh come on, bro, you know, you can do it, come on. I don't watched you since you started. Oh, really? Since, <laughs> since the day you started. I'm that is awesome. Out. My name's Steve Demas, bro. Thank you, Steve. You, you want to say hello real quick? Sure. Hello real quick. <laughs> this is the best. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's Absolutely. Get, let's get it in there. I got some coffee buddy for you, too. Oh, thank you very much. Very, very good. You're probably better at this than I am. Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Very You're kind of you. I mean, Happy you know, holidays, too. And, uh, From the very, very beginning. Very beginning. Wow. It's like in, it had to be March or April 20. Exactly. Is exactly. When I, yeah, when I first walked yeah. the strip, when it was a yeah. ghost town yeah. and everything. I used to, because we couldn't go anywhere, I'd make laps outside. And, and I listen to your podcast all the time. So I'm living in Vegas through you from Ohio. Oh, okay. So, I didn't want to interrupt you, no, though, man. Right. I appreciate that. You know, I saw your arm, and I thought, I'm going to find you. And I saw this background, and it looked like it was True Bar. Yep. You know this is? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, across the street, so I'm going to go see that too. I appreciate that. Well, Very kind of you. That. Very nice. This is your equipment. This is good stuff. Sabah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Very kind. That was awesome. Shout out Steve. What up, bro? That was very nice, Steve. All right. I love meeting people. I got all my boogie hankies over there. <laughs> but I do have hand sanitizer, so don't, don't, don't. Let's see. Um, yeah, did, you're right, Val Marie. Did you see the level of funk that was in the air yesterday? That was, that was, uh, yeah, he is. He said he's been, I don't know if he's in our, in the uh, the Facebook group, but the air was crunchy yesterday. But he said he watched from the original time I walked up and down the strip. Those are my first, you know, like true YouTube-ish videos. But you gotta hold people accountable, you know? Because if, if you say no, a lot of people don't like saying no. I don't like saying no. I don't like, you know, people thinking I'm a dick and, oh, he just says no, he just says no. The key to living a aerodynamic life, 
And I try to live an aerodynamic life. And what I mean by that is a life that isn't full of drama and chaos. I abhor drama and chaos. So I try to be aerodynamic in, in my flows through life. And the number one way of doing that is managing expectations. Not only my own, but with other people. Um, I never found that cheese stuff, never again in my whole life. That cheese is so good. <sighs> I, I don't know, that was, a, that was a once in a lifetime moment of that cheese. Manage expectations. So when I tell someone, um, you know, I feel you, I happen to have the money, it's gonna hurt me a little bit to do this, but you know, I care about your well being. But I'm gonna tell you, this is the last time. Not to be a dick, but you know, we, we can't both be broke, <laughs> you know? And that's the direction that this would go if I continue to, you know, to, to support you or whatever. So I'm managing the expectations. He knows damn well that the answer is gonna be no. It's gonna be no next time he approaches me, he or she. Um, and I'm off the hook because I don't have to be the bad guy because I could just harken back to, remember I told you last time? You know, being able to say no is important, but you can learn, you can lay the groundwork first before you have to say no. You know, like, you know, if someone repetitively invites you over for a dinner party and you keep making excuses, you know, and you might not even like the people or whatever, whatever it happens to be in your life, don't make excuses. Oh, well that's, you know, uh, I'm getting my hair done, uh, the dog's at the groomer, having the house painted, oh, that's the day the exterminators are coming. Just flat out tell them no, <laughs> you know? Just say, no, nah, I really don't like you, <laughs> whatever. Learn to say no and your life will improve. Learn to manage expectations of yourself and of others and your life will improve. Chaos sucks. And I wish people were more upfront. I mean, I'd rather take a no. I mean, I, I always know, you know, I always know when people are blowing smoke up the butt, you know? Again, the, intu the freaky intuition. And, you know, it's just cla almost clairvoyant. Like when people, I can tell when people are hedging, you know? They're just like, um, you know what? Um, yeah, meeting running late, I'll catch up with you in a bit. They're hedging later to tell you no, you know? I, I can always sense these things. Like a dude, you know, like, like what dudes do. Fellas, tell me I'm wrong. You know, you, you meet a woman, and you want to bolt, you know, after, you know, the boot knocking activities, what do you do? <coughs> you say up front, at 7 o'clock at night, you're like, oh man, oh, tomorrow's going to be a busy day. And she's like, why? What do you got going on? Oh, I got to get up at like freaking 6, you know, I, I got to work tomorrow. I got to be up like 5.30, 6. And she's like, but it's Sunday. Yeah, you know, my boss is an asshole. Guys do that. Guys have no problem doing that, but they're hedging. And I guess women do that too. But they're hedging because that's just like, remember I told you? Oh, shit, yeah, I got to go. What is it? 3 o'clock? I'm out of here. You know? It just is what it is. Do I believe in good luck charms? Um, next round of word filters, add cool. <laughs> Should I add cool? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, just just say no. I'd prefer people say no. Do I believe in good luck charms? Um, that's an interesting question. You know, like rabbits, foots. I, I believe everything has an energy to it. Even though, you know, I believe, um, you know, God-based. I'm still, you know, I still believe in some of the old ways. And it's my mule near, the old ways of my people which are animistic, which basically is the idea that all things have their own energy, and that's a biblical principle too. So, good luck. I, I think 
I think that's, you know, in some cases that's a mental thing, you know, where every time, you know, you wore this shirt, you got a hand pay, you know, and then you just don't want to do anything to F that up, so you keep going back to the well. I don't think you believe it, you just, you just want to mentally set yourself up in a position where it's the outcome is more likely and any change in your environment like I cannot stand if I'm playing whether slot machines this is a, a stupid example but slot machines craps or uh, blackjack when people mess with the stuff like they come around and they start cleaning the quarters and everything and just like whoa that's voodoo I'll just I'll literally stop playing when that happens if I'm on the floor and a cocktail waitress comes and starts you know messing the table energy up I'll just freaking get up and leave that's an extreme case however certain things do have energy to them like you know like people I always make fun of crystals and whatnot but there is power in that stuff. You do have to be careful of it. And that's another reason why um, I purge. I don't want, you know, end of a relationship, whether it's business, personal, whatever. I just want to, like, end that right away. I'm good. Thank you. I didn't sip on this yet. Oh, that's so good. Even lukewarm is good. I don't want anything associated with certain individuals around. I just don't, you know, because it gives off their... It's them. It's their energy. It might be like a negative conduit, you know, direct from them to you and whatnot. I don't, I don't want other people's shit in my life, especially when I've exercised them out of the life. Anything that's surrounding them, that has to go too. That's just the way it is. I think I think I missed. Uh, hold on a second. I think I owe someone an answer real quick. And funding. Oh, uh, BCDC78. Thank you for the seven banana ramas. Canadian ripe ones. What do I think of the four queens? Um, I honestly have never. Seen there so I cannot speak on the rooms themselves but I can speak on the energy in there we're going back to energy I, I kind of like the place um, if I recall correctly they it's uh, in terms of playing and player benefits I like El Cortez numero uno and then I like four queens and then I go all the way back to Main Street Station. So they are pretty high on my list. And every time we go downtown, um, I do enjoy the place. And we are going downtown. So BCDC, remind me to go check. We'll go do a walkthrough for you. And you can check it out yourself. We'll see if it changes. I literally haven't been there in months. So it might, you know, might change, might not. So... Yeah, we will go there, and we'll probably go downtown next Saturday. So plan on next Saturday being going downtown. So I will do a walkthrough of them. Phew, just remind me. I wish I had a better answer, but I just haven't been down there. Yeah, and no resort fees. Bingo, Jennifer. Thank you very much. We're all hitting the bars tonight. I love, uh, I love all what's. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, purging is, yeah, you just don't, I mean, I don't even understand why, like, like, even in a, I don't care if it was a, a Rolex, I don't care if it was a car, you know, if I, if someone gave me a car that I was no longer, I'd give them back the car, and, you know, unless they said, hey, listen, you know, I don't want it, or a gift that from a relationship, you know, a watch, or a pair of shoes, or some underwear, <laughs> whatever the heck it was. I, I, you know, if they didn't want it back, I would donate it. I would burn it. I mean, you're done with that for a reason. I mean, women, women are a little different in relationships. You know, they think like relationships and dudes. Next Saturday, absolutely. Um, 
and dudes are like stepping stones. They're chapters in their book of life and in their growing experience. That's, that's what you are, guys, you know? That's why I always say, in a woman's mind, you know, she's just yours for now. Because ultimately, you'll just end up a chapter in her, a stepping stone in her journey in life, you know? That's all you are. So she might look back at you in fond memories and be like, oh, you know, he taught me this and he taught me how to do that and he was great about this, you know, so they'll, they could think about it a little different, but guys are just like, once you break up, it's like, F you, <laughs> you know, F you, you know, you're dead to me, you know, that, that's just, I mean, at least you should be, you know, that's just the male nature, we don't think back and we're just like, oh, you know, she made the best grilled cheese, she taught me how to be kind to, to gerbils, and, you know, we're, we're done for a reason, you know? Guys step into a relationship, a true L LTR, expecting it to last forever. And when it doesn't, especially if it gets ended, you know, due to circumstances beyond your control, um, you know, we're just like, you're dead. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like if you died, you know? So we don't... We don't want to, well, I personally wouldn't want to keep your shit around. You know, we don't want to say, oh, this is the spoons that, you know, uh, Jane gave me in 1984. Throw them shits in the garbage, you know? I don't want Jane's energy around, you know? And I think it's unfair to your next partner, too, to be, you know, putting Jane's spoons in her mouth. Oh, where'd you get these spoons? Ah, uh, the last chick I was banging. <laughs> you know? Screw that. You know, it's unfair. You know, throw your bed out, too. Don't make a don't make a new woman sleep in the same bed as your old woman did, you know? That's freaking weird. Just don't do that. Ladies, don't do that either. Throw the bed out. Just saying. But women will hold on to stuff, you know, that you've given them. And then you're like, that freaking bitch. I gave her like a Harry Winston frickin' necklace and, and she's still keeping it, but you know, uh, she's wearing it with some other dude now. Well, number one, that's on you. Number two, women just think about it different. You were just a stepping stone and, and this was the, you know, that was the remembrance of you being the stepping stone, you know? They're just not like, they're not gonna toss it out and be like, hey, you want me a $12,000 bracelet back? You know, now that we're not together? It's a souvenir. So, you know, whatever. Got it? Got it. All right, let's, uh, what time is it? Oh, it's early. We got all the time. We got all the times. <laughs> By golly, it's time for mistletoe. They're playing the freaking loud music again. This is going to get spanked. So, hope we'll have fun. Uh, what do I want Santa to bring me this year? What do I want? I, I haven't asked Santa for something in so long. What do I want? You know what? I mean... Wow, that's loud. I mean, if Santa can bring me a non-material thing, I would want Santa to clear the path for me to get my shoulder and my bicep fixed this year. I really need that done. That was that was a, a life-altering event that I need to correct. Even though I know once I get it fixed, I'm gonna be back in the sling for a couple months, so I'll have to suffer through that, but I, I, that was a life-altering event. And not in a good way. Um, you know, yeah. It, I cannot, I cannot work out, and that that grates on me every freaking day. Not that I'm ever gonna go back to spending three hours in the gym six days a week at this stage of my life because I'm too busy trying to, you know, rule the world. But um, make my 700 million. But yeah, that was that was. If Santa could manifest that, damn, that would be cool. Physical things. Um, I don't know. I don't. I, I, do, I don't necessarily need anything. 
I would say if I was gonna ask Santa for something, what would I ask Santa for? Like a physical thing? What, what do I need? I gotta think about that a second. I gotta think about that. Let, I'll get back to you on that. I gotta think about it. I gotta think about it. A jetpack would be cool, Tom. <laughs> I gotta think about that. If I had to give a speech tomorrow, what would I talk about? Um, wow, I got so much stuff to talk about. But I think, like I said, I, I think the most life-changing thing that I could discuss with people, very, very simply, is, which I'll, I'll do a separate video about eventually, is the principle of having your needs and wants parallel and using it as a filter for every decision you have to make in your life. As in, you have to need something as much as you want it and you have to want it as much as you need it for it to be a good decision. Because sometimes in life, you need something real bad, but you don't really want it. So that shit is never gonna happen. Sometimes you want something real bad, but you don't really need it. That shit is not gonna happen. But when your needs and wants are in total parallel, pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, because the odds in life, very rarely are the odds in your favor. But when you have your needs and your wants parallel, the odds are almost in your favor. That, it, that it's gonna happen. And then I would say, I would, if they clapped and did, you know, if everyone, they gave me a standing ovation for that at my TED talk, um, then I would say, all right, I'd pass around a hat, and then I'd be like, I would teach the principle of, uh, the principle of two yeses. I think those are the most two powerful things that I could, uh, I could share with people. The principle of two yeses, like, hey, you want to go out Friday night or Saturday night? Um, you know, when do you want to start that job? A Monday or Tuesday? That's the principle of two yeses. I mean, you will get so far in life using the principle of two yeses. See, the, the needs and wants thing, is an internal thing that has to work between the ears you know that's internal externally applying a principle was giving people the choice between two yeses you want to eat a that's a beetle lugers you know <laughs> let's just eliminate the palms you know i'm given a choice between two yeses you know so you're gearing life to help yourself you know and other people don't mind because most people don't like making decisions anyway and if they just don't want to do something with you or don't want to do something for you or just plain don't freaking like you, you're forcing them to tell you. And then you know where you stand. So it's a win-win-win even if you get a no. But, and then, then I'd be like, then I'd take my vows and I'd think of something else to talk about. All right. Uh, any guilty pleasures? What? Oh, Valley, so I, I remember you said I am going to start a plug. That, that's the beauty of giving people a choice between two yeses. You can start applying that like right now. It's not like lifting weights. It's not like a diet. It's not like crystals. It's not like, oh, I'm going to manifest this into my life. You start using that shit immediately. Immediately. And you see immediate results. It's like like gravity gravity never jacks up neither does the principle of two yeses it's immutable it's immutable so and you can start doing it right away and i'm so glad you did, you're seeing benefit of that that is awesome that is awesome val uh, any guilty pleasures say it says tom mac all right the you want to hear the first one that just popped into my head? Something you might not know about me? Um, wow. Oh, all right. F it. Who cares? It's something cool. That's, that's like having a tissue on the bottom of your shoe when you leave the men's room. Pinky out. Bam. 
But I got a pinky ring on, so it's freaking masculine. You gotta have strong fingers to do that. See, I'm hedging the pinky. Alright, I'll tell you something. I like taking baths. I like taking baths. You know? I just, I, I never outgrew. I always take time to lounge. I mean, I just do. I mean, I have my bathroom set up like a spa. I ain't gonna freaking lie. I got the scents, I got the candles, I got the stuff. And I just treat myself at least once a week. I sit and I just get the temperature just right. It's, ca it's a cast iron deal. So, you know, I gotta, I, I put it hot first. That way the cast iron comes up to temperature. Then I fill it up. I do my thing. I have, uh, you know, I have manly, I don't put freaking lavender in there. I have manly freaking bath salts and whatever. I got some by, uh, I forgot who the heck it was. Whatever, some freaking manly ass company. Um, and I just treat myself. And I, I, I don't think about anything. I don't do any business. I don't, you know, I just let everything like, it's a, like a Calgon moment, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just let shit go. And it, it fits me in there and everything, and I just let shit go. You know, it's got the headrest. I, you know, I, like I said, I set it up like a spa, and that's what I do. And, you know, some guys would be like, ah, if that, you know. But, you know, come from a guy who uses product, you gotta treat yourself, you know, and that's one of my guilty pleasures. I mean, I generally try to do it once a week and just relax and just let shit go. And I, I'll either listen to music because I got a, I got a speaker, you know, piped into the bathroom, and you know, I just listen to stuff, you know. Sometimes I close all the lights and it's just dark, you know, dark, dark, dark. And I usually do like two cycles of warming it back up, you know, letting some of the water out, warming it back up. I usually do two cycles and I'm done. And then life starts all over again, you know? But it, I, I just feel in the action of doing that, it might not be the specific of taking a bath per se. Um, it might be around the golf for you guys out there. It might be watching Sunday football. It might be playing freaking bocce at the park. I don't know what it is for you, but at some point you gotta pay yourself. Does that make sense? You gotta pay yourself. Even like from a financial standpoint, you know, you're bringing in money and whatnot, you gotta pay, yeah, use them loofers. You gotta pay yourself. You gotta pay yourself first before you pay all your bills. Otherwise, you're just J-O-B-ing, you know, just above broke. <laughs> you know, you gotta pay yourself before you pay the bills even. Um, but the most valuable commodity you have is time. So if you don't pay yourself in the most valuable commodity that you have in your life, which is your time, then your, your entire life belongs to someone else, belongs to everyone else, belongs to the man, belongs to, you're just trading your time for dollars. You're trading your time for an early grave, whatever it happens to be, you know, pay yourself in time, you know, and that's just the release that I've found because I do have a pretty freaking busy existence I don't really have time to go enjoy six hours round golf, you know? I don't really have the time to go ATVing or bass fishing like, you know, I used to do. So, you know, it's just, I'll find that hour, I'll find that hour, and I'll take that, you know, I jump out of the bathtub, then I take a cold shower, you know, like cold, cold, like freaking polar bear cold after I get out of the hot bathtub, close off, off the pores again. And I'm paying myself off. I'm paying myself in the most valuable commodity I have, which is my own time. And you guys have to do it too. And I don't mean, I mean by yourself. I'm not talking about with your boys, with the girls, you know, or anything like that, but just you. 
do yourself, your own thoughts, and just like pay yourself back, you know? Pay yourself off. Yeah. Kevin says, yeah, I know, that's, that's weird, yeah, you, you know, you're right, you're right, you just, you just freed me, yeah, you're, you're right, Kevin, you're 100% correct, there's nothing to be embarrassed about or whatever, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a little weird, I mean, I just let you in my bathroom, that, that's a little weird, but, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, but, yeah, you're right, you're 100% correct, there's nothing to be embarrassed about, that's just how I do me, however you do you, but the principle being, Time is the most valuable commodity you have. Once you spend it, you're never ever getting it back. There is no more. You're assigned a certain amount. You might as well get to, you gotta pay yourself some time too, you know what I'm saying? James says, if you work for a living, don't kill yourself working, yeah, you know? The J-O-B, we, we went into that, I think I got to do a video about that, the J-O-B. J-O-B means just above broke, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's a big difference between a J-O-B and a career. Alright. Oh, that was, that was kind of liberating. I feel better now. <laughs> yeah. Hot tubs and Sausalito. Yeah, you know what I would do? You know what I would do? All right. Being that we're on the subject, one of my goals now, ever since I watched Suits, was to, uh, I wanna go, I wanna go like, sit in one of them freaking mud baths. Like, you know, like what, like what Lewis used to do, but Lewis used to make it a little weird and shit. But, just, I, I don't know why. It looks like a bath of chocolate, that freaking mud. I, I don't know why, but something about that intrigues me. The J-O-B, just... Oh, J-O-B, just over broke. <laughs> just, not yet, yeah, just above broke. You, you got me. Thank you, I appreciate the correction. Yeah, J-O-B is just over broke. Um, yeah, I would take a mud bath. I would totally take a mud bath. I would sit in that thing forever, but it'd have to be like fresh mud. I wouldn't want to sit in anyone else's freaking weirdness, you know what I'm saying? No, but they're like dry and... I, I don't know, I mean, it might suck. It might be just like, ew, this is gross, you know, all up in my business and whatnot, but something about that, because I'm into the bath scene anyway, you know? But just having that mud kind of compress all up in your... Yeah. I think that'd be awesome. I'm gonna try it once. If it sucks, if it doesn't suck, I'll tell you. Do I miss Brooklyn? Yes, I do. Well, I miss New. I miss. I don't miss. I miss New York more than I would. I miss actual Brooklyn. Um, you know, Brooklyn was kind of, you know, getting long in the tooth, but I miss New York, and I miss Brooklyn and Queens in specific. What I miss about it is the food. That would be number two. Food number two. The food in New York, I mean, I don't care. You could eat at the best restaurant out here in Vegas. Still doesn't hold a candle to, you know, like, a, a decent place in New York would be the equivalent of a great place here. Um... In my opinion, it's just so much food, so much good, authentic food. You know, you want to go eat some Jamaican food, you want to go eat some Colombian food, you want to go eat some Korean food, what part of Korea, you know, it's just, you want to eat Szechuan Chinese, you want to eat Cantonese, you know, it's just everything. You want to eat Northern Italian, you want to eat Southern Italian, you want to eat Sicilian, it's just like, there's everything. You want to go eat some Ethiopian food, there's everything, you know, the food, and it's like authentic. But, yeah, but the thing I miss the most about New York is the etiquette. That, I, I've never found it exist anywhere else besides uh, New York. Like, you know, don't stare too long, don't lean on people's cars, you know, there's a certain etiquette. 
that transpires in New York that you just learn from a very young age that you don't really see anywhere else, you know? Because someone, like I always say, like someone, you know, you start looking at a dude, you know, you, you find out this in grade school, you know, you're looking at a dude too long, and he's like, what are you writing a fucking book about me? <laughs> you know, you get corrected promptly, you know? I mean, I don't know now, maybe it's different, but you get corrected swiftly and fairly harshly, you know, coming up. So you just don't make the same, like, faux pas mistakes, you know? You don't do dumb shit because, you know, someone's going to bust you in the mouth, <laughs> you know? I don't know if it's like that anymore, but, you know, maybe they'll pew pew you, but there's, there's a different etiquette. There's a different social order of things, you know? There's a way you do things and there's a way not. I mean, people say, oh, all New Yorkers are assholes. They're really not, you know? Most New Yorkers are good people. But there's a certain etiquette that takes place that I have not encountered anywhere else. It's like, you know, it's like a complete, I, I, I like the order of it. I think that's what I'm getting at. Mighty Poe is from, born in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is kind of awesome. It's a Brooklyn thing, you know? <laughs> it's one of them Brooklyn things. The Peter Lugers here, I have that walkthrough, I have to put that into a separate video, completely different from the one in Brooklyn. Yeah, so Val, you did a mud detox? I want to do that. I want to freaking do that. I'm, I'm going to, all right, I'll, I'll tell you something else. I'm going to, I'm going to do a clay mask tonight. <laughs> Get all this freaking... I mean, I could feel it. All that shitty stuff that's flying around in the air. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people will correct. I mean, they don't mean to be assholes, but this is just the way it is. You know, people will correct you, and they'll correct you young. You know. I don't. I don't know if people correct each other anymore. Is that appropriate? Who freaking knows? What time is it? 7.02. I'm, I'm refreshing my chat. I plan on going back to New York. I mean, given a choice between visiting New York and checking out all my old stomping grounds and going to London or somewhere in the UK, I think I would choose London. Uh, da, 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 da. Joe with the two Bananaramas, and thank you, Mighty Bull, for those two Bananaramas. If you're a high-value woman, well, that's presuming she is a high-value woman. See, if she was a high-value woman, she wouldn't be asking for an engagement ring. So the question answered itself. So if my woman, being of higher value, she wouldn't be asking. She would just be like, you know, on my page and on my time frame. So if she asked me for an engagement ring, then she ain't all that high value. So again, the question answered itself, but I, I know where you're going. If she wants an engagement ring, uh, a, a, a high dollar engagement ring, maybe I'd get a Fugazi one? <laughs> you know? Maybe I'd get her a Fugazi one, and that would be a test too. Get her some Fugazi, uh, I'd get her a real setting in, in gold, but then I'd get the Fugazi diamond. And you know what? If she ever called me on it, because you, you would, I would, they're making them so good, you'd have to be, a, you'd have to have a loop, you know? You'd have to be a gemologist to figure it out. So if she came back to me and was just like, hey, um, you know, the, you, you gave me the Fugazi, uh, you gave me the Fugazi freaking engagement ring there. You know what I, my retort would be? I'd be like, oh, so you just wanted to see how much money it was worth, huh? You see what I'm saying? Have I been to Islip? Absolutely. Yeah, I've been to, I've been all over. I, I know Islip. So that would be a test on her, you know, of her character, because if I gave her an engagement ring, it wouldn't matter whether it was, you know, worth 20000 or 200 You know, it depends, you know. Oh, I need I need a certain amount of carrots and whatever. Take a hike, but 
you know, if she went and had it appraised to see how much I spent on her, that's, she's exposing herself, you know, more than she's exposing me. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't go for that. Now, if I wanted to gift her a ring, I'd, well, first of all, I'd have a rock solid engagement prenup <laughs> and a prenup prenup. And I'd, I'd have a pre pre prenup. Like I told you, dating, I'd even get a contract to date, let alone get married. You know what I'm saying? That's how I roll. You know, I put shit in writing. You know, like, this is what we do. <laughs> we don't go antiquing, you know, all in writing. Um, I'd put it right in a prenup. You bail, you give it back. If this, if this fails, even if it's my fault, you give it back. If you perceive it to be my fault, it's it's all coming back to me, you know? That's just the way it is. I'm, I'm not gonna suffer financially, you know, because a relationship didn't work out. Screw that. Just saying. Rings are an emotional investment, not a financial investment. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. You know, like, oh, the more I spend, the more, it means the more I love you. That, who, what, would that come from? Like the, the Lifetime channel, the Hallmark channel? If I buy a, you know, a Fugazi one, it's still gonna cost me a grand, you know? So, whatever, it's not putting a worth on it. I mean, you know, I prefer you wore it because, you know, it's like, bam, taken, you know? I don't know, but not that that matters anyway. Dun 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 dun! MacArthur Airport, wow. That, wow, I haven't heard that in a while. Do you know what's happening to all the malls on Long Island? I saw a show, one of those like, where the guy goes to the abandoned malls. I think it's Roosevelt Field. It's Club Fugazi. <laughs> the Roosevelt Field Mall is supposedly like a ghost town now I don't know I think it's a ghost town it's either that or Sunrise Mall which both of them I know intimately there was Green Acres Mall uh, Roosevelt Field Mall and Sunrise Mall I don't know I think Green Acres is still open but I think one of them I think it's Roosevelt Field is a ghost town now yeah, I'd rather have experiences or vacations than a, a rock. I would rather have, you know, uh, I'd rather like do a, a small event than a giant ass wedding because you'll never get that money back. Oh, it is Sunrise Mall? Sunrise is just dust now. Yeah, I saw the video and it's like, it's a ghost town. That was trippy. Yeah, Fugazi, right? I mean, it's still a diamond. It's a freaking artifact. What do they call that now? It's not, they, did, they have zirconium, cubic zirconium, but they actually have man-made diamonds. It's still a freaking diamond. It just didn't come from some child labor in freaking Africa. You know? So I, I would just pull that. I'm just like, smaller is better sometimes. Um, I would just be like, you know what? In all good conscience, how to get your man-made diamond because I just feel for those people in Africa, you know? Call me on that. Alright, I think I'm gonna go pay the bill. We got a tree to check out. So if you have any last questions, post them now while I go uh, take care of this here for Gazy. They, they charge me for the repo. <laughs> but still, it's 10 bucks. That ain't bad. So, they get the point. Score, be right back. Laboratory diamond, yeah, culture diamonds, yeah. Yeah, I, I would just call them on that, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, of course I got you a culture diamond. What do you think I am? Some kind of chadrul, some, some ingraciado, you know? Making those poor people work in Africa, risking their lives, that's what you want to wear on your fingers? Some guy risks his life? to get you that and then freaking poverty in Africa hell no I got you this fugazi thing
Alright. I'm gonna save the sugar. <laughs> That milk, they foam. I didn't even notice that. Oh, that was good. I drank some of it. I admit it. I didn't give her a Fugazi diamond. <laughs> Alright, what are we doing? Great place, warm and fuzzy. What are we talking about? Who's warm and fuzzy? I don't know where the oldest bar in town. Have I ever been caught in my birthday suit accidentally? Um. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. I'm trying to think if I could, I could tell that story accurately. Hmm. We gotta go see the giant Christmas tree over there too. I'm eating the sugar. It's freaking good. Oh, it's not a mirror. <laughs> One phone. All right, I'll tell it to you. I'll tell it to you real quick. As we mosey on our way, we're moseying. Let's pop our heads outside real quick. What time is it? Oh, we got time. We got all the times. This guy's been out here playing music so freaking loud. Let's see if he's still playing the loud ass music out there. Oh, is it gone? Oh, he's gone. Maybe they kicked him out. I can't believe, I'll tell the story in a second. I can't believe that they haven't taken this down yet. That is ridiculous. That's been weeks. What are they waiting for? I'm just going the side door. All right, let's see. Let's figure this, let's calculate the story real quick. <laughs> We might get blipped. Alright. The one time that comes to mind, I'm sure there'll be many others as I think about it. The one time that comes to mind was... At first I was just like, you know, looking for a fig leaf and then I was just like... Whatever. <laughs> I'll admit it. I'll admit it. All right. Happy now? Yeah, but, uh, like I said, at first it was slightly embarrassing. What is this? But then I was just like, well, we're all adults here. Because I ain't shy, anyway. What happened? You missed all that? Wow, that's getting loud. Can I go that way? No, not really.
All right, let me walk back in. Oh, you missed it all. Maybe that was by design. Is this shit working? Ugh. Dang it. No automatic door for you. All right, we're back inside. In on by the adult daughter of a woman I was seeing. Yeah, I didn't lock the bathroom door. And I was walked in on. Like, I was just about to jump in the shower. And I was like, you know, looking to grab a fig leaf because the first notion is just like to cover up. And then I was just like, F it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember that like it was yesterday. <laughs> Goodbye, Drew Bar. See you next week. Yeah, they should decorate that for Christmas. You heard it now, right? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to repeat it again. But you should have heard that. Yeah, that was a big oops. But I'm not shy or nothing, you know? But it definitely changed the dynamic <laughs> of the entire household after that say the least. See, what are they saying? That's like, I see that a lot. The sparkly skirts and the cowboy boots. I dig it. There's another one right there. Very westerny. We're gonna go see the giant at what the? What was that? We're gonna go see the giant Christmas tree. That's what we're doing. Have you had issues dating women with kids? Um, I would say yes, and I would I would never recommend. I'm getting involved in that situation. It's just, it, it, it's just bad. It's a no-win situation. For many, 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 many reasons. Like, single moms, not a chance. Not a freaking chance. Oh, I like that. Wow, she's tall. She's all sanded up. It's a no-win situation. You know? You step in, try to be dad, and they're all like, they're my kids, you can't correct them. And if you take a hands-off approach, you're like, what, you don't love my kids? Nah, screw that. Then you got to deal with baby daddies and weirdness. Nah, screw that. Constant reminders of her past, and it's like, no. I mean, you see these guys all the time, they're just like, you know, they'll, 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 like, wife up a pregnant woman. <laughs> you know, the other dude's seed still in her. Ugh, I don't get it. Not me. No, 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 no. Not a chance. Cannot recommend. Oh, it takes a real man to raise another man's children. No, it takes a real asshole to do that, in my opinion. Let him raise the kids. You know, if they're adult and out of the house, but, you know, they're, they're not your kids. They never will be. And it's a constant compromise, you know? Look at the size of this tree. This is massive. You get all the benefits. I mean, you get all the responsibility with none of the benefits. Cannot recommend that's a whole nother conversation we should have one day. But the world is full of single moms now. Look at that thing, it's beautiful. 
woman with adult kids, perhaps. Like adult out of the house, perhaps. Yeah, that that's a slightly different story. But raising someone else's kids, no, just don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Look at this thing. <laughs> Whoa, giant tree. I mean, it is. I, I don't even know how big this tree is. Let's look. And I'm sure it's a lot of butt hurt from that statement, but there shouldn't be. Because everyone knows it's true. Wow. That's big. What they, they even have like names for that now that women try to soft soak you with. Oh, we're a we're a blended family. What? <laughs> blended with what? All the other guys have been banging you? No thanks. We're blended now. Oh, gee. Nah, I just don't. Isn't that nice? We're a blended family. I mean, as much as I love the friggin' Brady Bunch. <laughs> Your life will never be the Brady Bunch. Raising some other dude's kids. Oh, we get to peek under the skirt. Let's do that. What's the best place to do that? It takes a real man to raise my baby daddy's kids. Well, I ain't real. I ain't that real. All right, let's go look. Oh, look under the skirt. <laughs> no way. That's cool. Look how that works. People are probably looking at me like I'm a freak. I'm actually under the tree. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> the background of that picture. My ass hanging out from under the tree. It's a tree in a tree. That was tremendous. Let's see if we can look. Yeah, I'll, we should do a we should do a little chat about that. Oh look. Yeah, the Brady Bunch house is awesome. Even though that was never real, it's like an impossible house. That was just a set. Isn't I, I heard someone told me that Lewis Hamilton knocked up uh, Shakira. I think Shakira was Sha is it Shakira? Yeah, I think it was Shakira. She ditched that uh, that soccer player and was banging him, and he got her pregnant. Oh, grrr, Max. I have no idea where they keep this thing. A lot of times they rent these things. They rent Christmas ornaments. We gotta go see, I mean, it's such a shame that the fashion show mall doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi. Like this place, it's still a Simon property, but their Wi-Fi is like horrendous. Otherwise, we'd hang out in there and go see Santa. Because Santa's already there. Oh, let's look at watches. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, that's what I want. I asked Santa for a watch. <laughs> Santa, bring me a watch. So, any last minute questions?
That was a fun AMA. That's why that's that to me is a, a sign of a good AMA. Where I not only get to answer questions, but also get to deal with um, uh, you know issues. Get to pontificate a little bit. Bust out the part-time philosophy. That's how I judge an AMA. I love doing those. I really do. Would I knock up Shakira? Um, not within a month of her being with some other dude. Because I think that that's how the math worked out. I don't know. I haven't seen her in a long time. But I would never be interested in anyone with any type of uh, fame or notoriety. That just doesn't interest me. <laughs> Whatsoever. So, yeah, I guess the answer would be no. Creed. Like, no, I'm good. Sorry, Shakira. Hey, don't man. You got no ads tonight? I got like three in pretty rapid succession in the beginning, and I haven't gotten one since. So that's cool. My favorite song, I don't think I have a favorite song. I'm too eclectic. I like everything. I like 90s alt and grunge, 90s rap, classic, you know, all the way to like, you know, you know, listening to Jelly Roll. I listen to everything. The only thing I don't like is like fusion jazz because it's like chaotic and I just abhor anything chaotic. Yeah, music is just great. I love music. Oh, I didn't even notice this. What time is it? Do we got a little, yeah, we got a little bit of time to walk around. Hey, doing? <laughs> I see you. I didn't even notice that. They know. Who's this supposed to be? I guess I should know, but I have no clue. Maybe it says it somewhere. Nope. I didn't even notice that. Like this place is so overrated. Ba bam. She almost hurt me with them. Burberry. Wow, look at those roses. I don't know if that's real. No, they're not roses. Let's touch them. Phony. You got an O light ad. That's weird. It shouldn't be doing that. They're supposed to have whitelist in my channel. I mean, uh, yeah. Smooth jazz, yeah. And I love female vocalists, too. I love me some Sade. Melissa Etheridge. I, I love all that. Like the older stuff. Even Sinead O'Connor is pretty awesome. Yeah, good female vocalist. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good over here. Oh, it is my alarm. Bump, bump. Bump, bump. Wow, where's that smell coming from? It smells glorious. Shot day is awesome. She's a very troubled individual, I think. I like her music. What is that? I can't even tell anymore. Dip to Q? Dip? 
DQ? What is a dip the Q? I don't know. Whatever it is, I don't want any. Yeah, it's not really done. They don't really decorate malls anymore. Ooh, what a voice. She got me with that one. I'm loving this couple right here. Yeah. The energy coming from them is freaking awesome. Seen her taking a picture by the fountain before. It was just all the love in the air. I digged it. Claw spa. Oh, can I get a mud bath in there? What is this here? Roman baths, Arctic ice room. I want a freaking mud bath. What am I doing? What are you doing? Taking, taking video of you. How you doing? Okay. <laughs> and him. Hello. Oh, uh, we're on YouTube right now. You want to say hello to the world? Hi, world. Yeah. <laughs> Don't walk into nothing now. How you doing, man? The world. Me. How you doing? How you doing? Good to meet you. Always a pleasure. You didn't answer my question. What's up? You said we are on YouTube right now. Who's we? You can take it. Uh, me? Are you working for the mall? No, 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 no. You're an influencer on what? Uh, oh, I abhor that influence. I just hang out and have fun. What do we got? Got 242 people watching right now. Is that a lot? It's average. <laughs> It's average. It's fun. So somebody's sitting at home on a Saturday, Friday night, oh, watching you average. walk through a mall. Yeah. Because I got a great personality. I'm just an awesome you fucking dude. Any tips on me? All right, definitely. I'll, I'll definitely let you know that. Man, <laughs> he wanted to challenge me. That's funny. He wasn't going to win that one. <laughs> he didn't like his woman coming up to me. Oh, where's that fish? Right? Look at him. Look at the eyes on that thing. But I did the right thing. I tried to include him. The fact that he wanted to be a dick. That's on him, not me. He's so pissed at her. He's cursing at her now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I normally feel bad for dudes when stuff like that happens. But he had that like tiny dick energy going on. Martin Lawrence. So that's all they got down here is two wreaths. This place, every time I pass, is getting emptier and emptier and emptier. And the music getting louder and louder and louder. That's Levi's now? Oh my god. Alright, a 
totally done. Now I think it's almost time. <laughs> see what she's got going on. That looks so old. Well, it's relatively new. Now let's 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 judge this here. That's a great picture. So is that. Mark Jacobs, ladies. I'm so glad the Barbie trend has died with all the pink. Very plain. I still haven't invested in any suits yet. I haven't found anything I truly liked. I was trying to get something for Black Friday to pick up a couple, but I just have a problem ordering it online. Couldn't do it. I have another fitting with, uh, what the hell's the name of that place? Not Panera, <laughs> Panera Bread. Um, P Pantino? Pantino? In... Bellagio said they would give me a complimentary fitting head to toe in the efforts to extract money from me. I gotta make my way over that one of these days. Yeah, well, Dillard's never has uh, Christmas sales. They don't even have like after Christmas sales. They, Dillard's just doesn't do... The only time they do sales is uh, end-of-season sales. That's the only time they ever have sales. They don't do holiday sales or none of that. Which I respect because that just keeps their prices in check, you know? Keeps you from waiting for sales. Except people like me. I'm just like, oh, spring come out. <laughs> spring going away, I'm there. 70% off rack, here I come. Alright, what are we doing over here? Da -da 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 -da. Alright. Bonk. The kid was shopping on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> they began, Levi began selling, no shit, tarps for covered wagons. Wow, that's crazy. Alright, what time is it here? It is not, what was I not? 7.38. I got all my phones on me. People. Snooze. Alright, people. I enjoyed that. I honestly did enjoy that. I hope you guys enjoyed that, too. Um... Tomorrow, we are going out. I am going to do some strip activities. I'm thinking we're going to go to Aria tomorrow night. Maybe, maybe not. I got to see. Aria, Bellagio, somewhere in the city center, we'll go hang out. We'll go look around, go see some Christmas, all that type of good stuff. Ladies. What? Why is everyone looking at me? Is my fly down? Or do they hear about my, my, my bath habits? Maybe Helen Michael is still for the I know, right? Want, want to say? Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Welcome to Caesars. Thank you, I appreciate and the that. <laughs> Very nice. Cool. Alright, now we'll move that. I like it. <laughs> Have a good one. You too. I, I think that was I think that was like a direct descendant of Caesar. He was cool. So tomorrow night we're going out probably about I don't know. Between, somewhere between five and six, as per usual. We'll spend a couple hours out, but I enjoy. Uh, so I wouldn't date Talos. No. <laughs> no not, someone just asked if I would date Talos Swift. No. No, I wouldn't. No, not a chance. You know, it's just like, ugh. I'm not, you know, doesn't do anything for me. And, you know, physically, she doesn't do anything for me, but the notoriety makes it a, a, a hard pass. 
Anyway, so I look forward to tomorrow night. I had a great time tonight. I hope you guys did too. I'm going to invite you one last time to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell button to get notified when I do this again, which is at least five times a week. And if you want to support the channel, do that. Thank you for all the super chat this evening. Pay for my parking, and I do appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. And on that note, for Frederick out.